on a very short topic, which is a question uh, that was asked on the day that Jesus walked to Jerusalem. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew chapter 21. And the question can be found in 10. Who is this? Who is this? That's the theme for this morning. Who is this? Beloved, it depends on who you see Jesus to be. And that will determine how you relate to him. If you see him as who he is, you will experience him in a way that is quite different from if you do not know who he really is. Today is Palm Sunday, and it is just a week to Easter, probably about four days to crucifixion, or five days to crucifixion. And on that day in time, that particular Sunday, Jesus decided to go to Jerusalem because he knew exactly what was ahead of him and he was willing and ready for it. So if you go to um, Matthew chapter 20, 17 to 19, the Bible says that now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. On the way, he took the 12 aside and said to them, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death, and will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. On the third day, he will be raised to life. I said on the third day, he will be raised to life. Now, this is quite interesting because uh, he knew what was awaiting him, yet he was willing to go. Who is this that could see death ahead, but yet would choose to go? Many of us would, would have decided not to go, but he decided to go. If you had followed Jesus and his ministry a little bit, you realize that he was one person who did not want to show off and he would want to go to public places in secret. He wouldn't want to go with uh, pomp and uh, all kinds of... Uh, he would always want to stay back or he would want to really go on his own terms. He would want to hide. He would want to... He, even after he has healed people, he says, don't tell anyone. That's how he really uh, um, did ministry. But then on this occasion, he told his disciples that I am going to Jerusalem. And this is what is going to happen to me. But yet, he was not afraid. He was not afraid of death, but he was willing to face death. So you go to um, chapter 21. Let's fast forward to chapter 21 from verse 1. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. Now, this is, what is he going to do with that? I, I, I believe that the disciples were confused 
Why would he ask us to go and do this? And number two, how does he know that way ahead of us, there is a place, maybe by a tree or something, a donkey, and it's called a tie there. How did he know that? Amen. And if, if Jesus was sending you or if I'm sending you, you would question me because this is not someone they didn't know. They've been walking with him. And he, they knew that where he is sending them to go, he's not gone there. Because they were with him. If he had gone there and he had kept them there, they would have known. But he hasn't done any of that. Yet he sends them, go ahead and you will see this. And someone will ask you a question and tell the person this. When did you plan with that person? You see, I'm just trying to get you to understand. Maybe you don't know who you serve. Who is this? Who is this who could see ahead and would tell his disciples that go over there. And as you get there, you will see a donkey and a colt tied there. Tell, I mean, go pick them. He did not say go ask anyone. He says go and untie them and bring them to me. And the moment you begin to untie them, someone will question you. But tell the person that the Lord needs them. The Lord needs them. And he will send them right away. He will not ask any question. You see, there are times I tell people that you have to know the God you serve. Because if he decides to do something, no one stops him. No one. So, take this and bring it to me. And he just made them understand that no one is going to question you. I mean, no one is going to stop you. They will question you, but they won't stop you. If you tell them that the Lord needs them, they will let you go. Hallelujah. I don't know what you would have done. Maybe I don't know what I would have done at that moment. But there is no indication that the disciples asked any question. They straight away went. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's continue from verse 4. Who is this? This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the fall of a donkey. If you read uh, the account in Mark, it says that that cult has never been written on. No one has sat on it. And it is believed that that is why, you know, if you take the child without the mother, the child will be, the mother will be aggressive. One, the child, I mean, the cult will probably maybe uh, not, will react in a different way. So bring the mother along. But Jesus is not focused on donkeys. He's focused on the cult. Hallelujah. And they went. And prophecy has to be fulfilled. If it's, if, if, <laughs> if it's a prophecy from God, it has to be fulfilled. It doesn't matter how long it takes. God doesn't get it wrong. I said God does not get it wrong. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It shall definitely come to pass. And this prophecy was way back in Zechariah. Yet it came to pass. And Jesus sent them. 
Bible says that the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their clothes on them for Jesus to sit on. If it's Jesus sending you, know that there's not going to be any problem. He knows what is ahead. He prepares things for us. I just want us to really rest in him. Who is this? Who is he? Who is this one who would send his disciples and they would go and it would be just as it is? Who is this? Matthew 17, 27. Who is this? Who is this? But so that we may not cause offense, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find a four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. Who is this that could send his disciples to go into the lake, find the fish inside the lake, open its mouth, and you won't find a five, uh, five uh, you won't find a five drachma coin. Neither will you find the ten drachma coin, but you will find the exact amount we owe as taxes. Who is this? Who is this that could see what is, what is going on under the lake? Who is this that could see that there is a fish here that has four drachma coin in his mouth and we owe four drachma? Who is this? Who is he to you? We have belittled Jesus to the extent that we, 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 we doubt every word he says. This fisherman, and I know he sent Peter. I know he sent Peter because Peter is a fisherman. You know, Andrew is a fisherman. John is a fisherman. And James is a fisherman. Because all these ones, he got them by their boats. So they are fishermen. Jesus is a carpenter. How can a carpenter tell a fisherman that go fishing? And tell him where you can find fish. But the, 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 the answer is very simple. Because the fisherman had gone fishing once and couldn't find any fish. But when he met the carpenter. And the carpenter said that just go a little bit here. Cast your net. He got so much fish, he couldn't carry. So next time, if he says that there is a fish in the lake that has four drachma coin in his mouth, you will not doubt it. What hasn't Jesus done in your life? And you're still doubting. Tell me. Tell me he's not done anything in your life. That's why you doubt. If he's done something in your life, why do you still doubt? Who is this? Who is this? Who is this that we are dealing with? Many of us do not know him. Or many of us, we know him in part. And that's what is going to happen right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The disciples, from verse 6, the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna 
to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Beloved, they were calling on the son of David to save them. They have been under bondage. They have been controlled by the Romans and they needed some breakthrough or they needed some freedom. And they thought Jesus was coming to do that. And indeed, he was coming to free us. But unfortunately, they had a wrong understanding. You know, there are times we, many of us came to Christ because we think that he will give us money. Many of us came because we think that all our problems will be solved. Let me tell you something. He's able to provide money. Indeed, he is able to. He's able to resolve all your problems. He's able to heal all your sicknesses, all your diseases. He's able to provide everything that you need. He's able to make you who you want to be. He is God. He has the capacity and ability and power to do all that. But don't limit him to that. You see, knowing him partially will limit how you serve him. If you know him for who he really is, your attitude towards him will be different. And how you serve him will be different. Many of us are half-hearted Christians. We know him in part. We know him like probably maybe 80%, some even 90%. But you see, knowing him for some percentage and not 100 doesn't please him. Because in Revelation, he told the churches, the seven churches, and he will tell them that you did A, B, and C, and you did right, and everything is fine, but I have this against you. And he again says that he hates lukewarmness. If you're going to be cold, be cold. If you're going to be hot, be hot. He doesn't want you to be cold and hot at the same time. So we need to understand that in order to really follow him and serve him, we have to know him in full. We have to know who he really is. Hallelujah. These guys were shouting Hosanna. They were calling him son of David. Indeed, he is son of David. But they lacked something. Because I believe that they, their mindset was corrupted by what they wanted. So they did not have a full knowledge of who he really is. Hallelujah. Why am I saying that? Let's go to verse 10. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? Now, who is this? And that's why I've been saying, who is this all this morning? Who is this? We are shouting, Hosanna to the highest. Son of David, we shout, we say everything that we have to say. Now we are confronted with a question. Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Now, hear the answer. The people that are following him and shouting Hosanna, and shouting son of David, must know who they are following. Yet, they answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. That's where the problem started. 
That's when you know. And that's why you shouldn't be surprised that the same people said crucify him. They knew him as a prophet from Nazareth. Indeed, he is a prophet. But that does not describe who he really is. Hallelujah. You see, if you know him, and many of us know him as a prophet, so we are seeking for a prophecy from him. Many of us know him as a healer, and we're looking for a healing. Many of us know, and that's why you, when you get your healing, you realize that you are not serving him. Because you saw him as your healer, and he healed you. But the rest is not your business. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go to Matthew 16. From verse 13. You see, let me tell you this. It's important for you to know who Jesus is if you are following him. If you are following him, because Jesus is not happy when you know him in part. He wants you, you to know him in full, who he really is. So, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Who is he? Who am I? What are people saying about me? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Hallelujah. Was Jesus excited about that? But what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? If they get it wrong, there's a problem. I said, if they get it, because if the... The first group of people have gotten it wrong. And Jesus is now saying, asking his own disciples, all these people got it wrong. What about you? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Not the son of David. The son of the living God. You are the Messiah. The son of the living God. Now let's hear what Jesus said. Jesus replied. When he had the first answer, he never said, blessed are they. But when he, when he heard the second answer from Peter... Now he said, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. Jesus, the identity of Jesus is not revealed to us by our carnal mind. You see, people identify Jesus by what they can get out of him. But Jesus is known by revelation. Amen. And that revelation comes from Jesus. That's why, you see, I, I ask people that when you encountered Jesus, when you, the day you said you really loved Jesus and gave your life to Jesus, how did you feel? What happened to you? Because, you see, if you really encounter him by revelation, something happens to you. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. Jesus is the Messiah. Nothing short of that. 
In the Messiah, you see the prophetic, uh, uh, the prophetic coming out of him. In the Messiah, the healer comes out of him. In the Messiah, the provider comes out of him. You see, in the Messiah, there is everything in him. Because he is, if you call him the Messiah, if you know him as the Messiah, the son of the living God, you know that he is God. And God has everything. So you will not limit him to only one side of the story and leave the other. Because many of us, let me tell you the truth, and that's what happened to this group of people. Because when they asked them, they were following Jesus. I said they were following who? And... <laughs> Shouting after him, thinking that he's going to really save them. Hosanna means save us. And they knew he was going to save them. And therefore, they said, Hosanna. They knew him to save them from a physical situation that they were in. They were not looking at the spiritual. Therefore, they were limited in their knowledge of who he really is. And when what they wanted did not happen, they said crucify him. The same crowd that said, Hosanna, they say, if someone is coming to save you, you will not say kill him. They realized his mindset was different. What he really was pursuing was different. What he came to do was different. Because they realized that they wanted some kind of physical salvation. They were not looking at the spiritual part of it. And therefore, when they did not get that, they said crucify him. Let me tell you something. Do you know Cleopas and his friend? They followed Jesus. I said they did what? And let me tell you something. These were not people who were following Jesus from a distance. They were close. They were close to Jesus. Hallelujah. I said they were close to Jesus. How did I know that? When, they, when Jesus died and was buried and he rose up on the third day and the women came to report but they didn't see him, they decided to go home. I said they did what? They had left their businesses. Jesus was going to be the president and they would be ministers. They will have some positions. But now Jesus died. Everything is lost. No position. If you are not careful, even the Pharisees and the Sadducees are going to come after you. It's better we go home. Clopas called a friend. Let's go. Hallelujah. They did not know the Messiah. And the reason I tell you Jesus was close to them was that Jesus followed them. And Jesus, when he, Jesus followed them, something happened. You know, I want you to really follow Jesus very closely. Because if you follow him closely... He will show you certain things that you have never, you have never seen about him. I'm going to show you this morning something you did not know about Jesus. Let's go to Luke chapter 24. Hmm. I, I wouldn't like to read everything, but I want you to see this. Let's, let's just from verse 27. 
that from 17, sorry. These guys are walking. They are fed up. Jesus had failed them. Probably one thought he was going to be the minister of finance because Judas is dead. Amen. The one who keeps the money is dead. So, yeah, I mean, he's going to be the finance minister or something. Hallelujah. But then Jesus is gone. All the time they spent following him looks like it's wasted. So they're going back. They're walking along. And Jesus joined them on the journey. And as they were going, verse 17 says that Jesus, I mean, Jesus had joined them. And in verse 17, he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. Their faces what? Downcast. Sorrow. We left our businesses, follow this guy, and who is this that you are following? One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? They couldn't even identify Jesus in his resurrected nature. Because they were so physical that they were not in the spirit. So when Jesus transitioned and he came back with a new body, they couldn't recognize him. They couldn't. Many of us, Jesus visits us and we can't recognize him. Because we are too physical. We are focused on the needs and the things that we want from Jesus physically that when he is showing us something that is going to really give us even more, we don't pay attention. Take your mind from the physical. Because Jesus said that there is coming a time and those who worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. Hallelujah. Hmm. What things he asked about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet. He was what? He was what? The crowd said, hallelujah. You see, they, everyone thought he was a prophet only. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death. And they crucified him. And they crucified him. But, he had, but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And, that, and what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. Listen. Jesus' expectation of you is more than what you think. I said, Jesus is expecting more of you than you think. Go to the next verse. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. How can you find his body when he said he will rise on the third day? Why were you following him? What were you thinking? They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. My goodness. 
Don't go and look for him in an empty tomb. You won't find him. You won't find him. Many of us are running around and find it, trying to find him in empty tombs. He is not there. He is alive. I said he is alive. Now, this is Jesus speaking. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah, now listen, look at the difference. Did not who? You're looking at a prophet. You're looking for a prophet. You thought you were working with a, with a prophet, but you, all along, you were working with a Messiah. You're still really talking about a prophet. Let me tell you, I am the Messiah. I am not just a prophet. I am the Messiah. So when he was addressing them, he did not address them that did not the prophet have to suffer? It is the Messiah who has to suffer. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? Why are you looking for him here? Why are you going around in empty tombs, going around empty tombs looking for him? You can't find him there. You walked with me all this time and you were that foolish? You were that slow. How many of us are slow to understand the things of God? Can you go back to that verse? He said to them, how foolish you are. Jesus was not trying to look down upon them. He was surprised. He was shocked at their lack of understanding. You see, when you are in the physical and thinking about the physical, there are certain spiritual things you never understand. So you walk with Jesus in a certain way that is not right. Because you're supposed to walk with him in spirit and in truth. But many of us are just looking at physical Jesus. And we're looking at the physical things that we can get. And that is why Jesus said about the, the seed that fell in tongues. He said that because of the pleasures of this world, it's for the physical. The curse of this world, it's for the physical. The deceitfulness of world, it's for the physical. He says if you are focused and concentrated on the physical, what is going to happen is that you're going to miss the mark. You will not be able to know who I am. And these guys had followed him. And when they were going back, Jesus said, no, this guy, I need to follow this guy. They were very close to me, but they were so foolish they couldn't get it. They, you see, if, and many times, listen to me carefully, child of God. There are times you are going down. Jesus, he comes in your way and tries to interrupt he comes to you. You see, sometimes he's even causing donkeys to talk to you. Because he cares so much about you that when the prophet couldn't hear God, the prophet is supposed to hear God. When prophets can hear God, he makes donkeys prophesy to prophets. So this, the, the Bible says that the Lord calls the, 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 the donkey of the prophet to speak to if the prophets can't prophesy well and they can't hear, donkeys will begin to prophesy to them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to understand that God Almighty wants you to know who he really is. He wants you to understand a lot of things. So he felt the people should have gotten this. You walked with me all this while. And only three days I left. You're going back home? 
For what? Jesus chased them. He walked with them on the road. He followed them. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I, you see, I, don't, I can't read everything. So just let me, let, let me move. Which verse are we now? Okay. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? 27. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself, the Messiah. Because he is the Messiah. And the prophets was, were talking about the Messiah, and you are still calling the Messiah a prophet. Hallelujah. Move on quickly. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. Jesus was not going anywhere. He came for them. I said he came for them. And watch what is going to happen. These guys, after, you know, now something spiritual is happening to them. And Jesus knew it. I said Jesus knew what was going on with them, but they themselves were confused. You see, many of us, we begin to get encounters with God, and he is really manifesting himself in a certain way to us. And we are not seeing physical things, but spiritually, we are getting some kind of, uh, um, uh, let me say feelings, that we know that something is happening. But we are rejecting it because we have become too much in the flesh. So these guys, something is happening to them, but they are, not, they are afraid to ask Jesus. They are unable to ask. And they can't see Jesus because they, they are too much in the flesh. So they can see him. Hallelujah. Amen. Who is this? Is he just a prophet to you? Or he's your savior, the Messiah? Who is he to you? Who is he? Who is he to these guys? But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over, so he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table... With them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened. Then their eyes were opened. My prayer this morning is that your eyes will be opened. Many are spiritually blind. I said many are what? And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. You know, a lot of us are blind. And we are in church. The Bible says that the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. You need Christ to open your eyes. Because a lot of us, we are in church, but we are blinded. These guys had walked with Jesus, but couldn't see. Couldn't know exactly who they are walking with. And even on this journey, on the road to Amos, as they were walking with Jesus, as they were walking with Jesus, and Jesus was speaking to them, you know, Jesus told them they were foolish. They couldn't, ask, they couldn't say anything. No, come, come. You, you guys come too. Two of you come. Yeah. They're walking with Jesus. Jesus probably is in the middle. And he said, you guys are foolish. How are you so slow to understand? And they look at a total stranger telling them they are foolish. And they couldn't react. And you will know why. You know why they couldn't react. Let me tell you something. 
When Jesus speaks, there's power. Amen. There's power in his words. And Bible says that, can you go back quickly to uh, look to uh, 24? Yeah. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. So the moment he gave them bread, their eyes were opened. And they recognized who they were speaking to, who they had walked with. Now they see the Messiah. And immediately that happened, Jesus disappeared from their side. And they couldn't find him anymore. Now, go to the next verse. They asked each other. Now, you, you guys fight amongst yourselves. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm, 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 I'm gone. Jesus is gone. I'm, I'm gone. I've disappeared. Look at them. They are fighting. We're not our hearts burning within us. Listen, 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 listen. When they were walking with Jesus, did they talk? So how will this one know this one's heart was burning? And this one's heart was also burning. Now they, it's become some kind of, I don't know whether they are fighting, they are confused, whatever. Ah, we're not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. A simple stranger. They meet a stranger who tells them they are foolish and they still can't say anything because immediately something is happening to them. Because when Jesus speaks to you, something happens to you. When you have an encounter with Jesus, you will never remain the same. These guys have given up. Who is this? I said, these guys have given up. And they are going back to their village. Because Jesus has failed them. Now they encounter, because they were following a prophet. Now they encounter the Messiah. Their eyes open. They see him. Look at what they do next. They got up. I think it was midnight. I think it was late. But Bible says that they got up and returned the next day. They did what? Do you know why you are not interested to come to church? You've not encountered Jesus. Because when you encounter him, you can't wait till the next service. You want a service in your own house. You want, you see, there are times you are asking, when is the next service coming on? When is the next service coming on? It, listen to me. If you are not passionate about Jesus, there's something wrong. Because when you encounter him, you can't sit down. You cannot stay in your house. I said when you encounter him, when they encountered him, when their eyes opened and they recognized him, what did they do? Bible says that they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together. You see, and when they got there and they saw that the people were still there, they saw how foolish they were indeed. Why did we leave? I knew there was another battle. Clopas was telling his friend that, you see, you said we should go. And then he was also saying that, you said we should go. You see, you, 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 if, if, uh -huh, look at them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because when they got there, they were still there. The guys were there. The 11 and those who were left because the disciples, the people that followed Jesus had scattered. They had scattered and they had gone their way. It was only left with the 11 because Judas is dead anyway. So they are now left with 11 and all the others that were with them. Who is this? Who is this? Now they know who he is. He's not just a prophet. He's the Messiah. I said he's not just a prophet. He is the Messiah. If you know him as the Messiah... Regardless of what happens, you're going to stay. If you know him as the one who really came to save you, regardless of what you go through, you're going to stay. Your actions, your life is going to change. Your relationship with him is going to change. Many of us, we are scratching on the surface. I want you to go a little bit deeper. 
many of us, the way we are thinking, if Jesus meets us right now, he will say we are foolish. Who are you? Who are you? And who do you think he is? Just a prophet? Just your healer? Just your provider? He's more than that. He is the Messiah. I said he is the Messiah. And this morning, I want you to really understand that the one that you are following is the Messiah, the son of the living God. The people followed him. But when they were asked, who is this? They called him a prophet. They thought they were following a prophet from Nazareth. They did not know that they are speaking and follow, with and following the Messiah, the son of the living God who left his throne in heaven, came down to die to save them. They were looking for a political kingdom. They were looking for something that they can enjoy now. Many of us are sitting here this morning. You have given your life to Christ, but you don't know what you did. You're still chasing after the world. If you know him as your Messiah, he will be your provider as well. He will be the prophet to you as well. He will be your healer. Don't know him as a healer only. He is the Messiah. I came this morning to announce to you because many of us are asking, who is this? Who is this? But I'm here this morning to announce to you that he is the Messiah, the son of the living God. He was not afraid to die. He's, he voluntarily gave his life so he could be killed, and he would die, so we will be saved. Beloved in the Lord, this was the day he began that journey. The last one week of his life on earth. This is the day that he began the journey into Jerusalem. This is the day this is the day. And this is the day that this, they, they shouted Hosanna. This is the day they shouted son of David. But when they were asked, who is this? They got it wrong. Maybe you have followed Jesus all this while. These guys followed him as well. But they did not know exactly who they were following. They thought they were following a prophet. They did not know they were following the Messiah. I don't know about you. Who do you think you are following? Who is he to you? The moment you encounter him and know who he really is, your life will never be the same again. Your life will change. Something will happen. Like what happened to Cleopas and his friend. They had gotten to Amos. But they immediately returned to Jerusalem. Beloved in the Lord, I want us this morning to ask ourselves, just like Jesus asked the disciples, who do you say I am? Who is Jesus to you? Do you see him as your healer alone? Or do you see him as your provider? Who is he to you? Yes, indeed, he's, he provides for you. And indeed, yes, he heals you. But he's more than that. He is the Messiah. The Bible says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through him. Who do you see him to be? This morning, I want you to be on your feet. <laughs> <laughs>